you are going to watch a small part of my weekly show at Chess24. To get a full version, become a premium member using the short link bit.ly slash c24 premium. Enjoy! Another example of triangulation, another example of the unusual Tsuk Tsuang. So, um, this position is quite simple to understand, actually. Uh, white has two rooks in the knight, black has the queen in the knight, and uh, what white wants to do is to win the knight e1, but at the same time not to lose the knight h6, right? Only in this case, white will have some chances to win. If white, of course, wants to uh, make a draw, it's very easy to do. So, first of all, rook takes e1 is possible, after which king takes an h6 and, well, it is a dead draw. Uh, why? Because, uh, well, um, it's not possible to make a progress with white here. Uh, typically, when we have two rooks against the queen, there is usually the idea of sacrificing both rooks for opponent's queen and the pawn and actually winning the uh, king and pawn endgame. Here it makes no sense because the only pawn we can win it is the h7 pawn after which we have the endgame with the h pawn uh, against the king which is uh, completely drawish, right? King occupies correct uh, area near the h8 square so it's not possible to make a progress there. If rook goes to f7 on the first move, just attacking the king and the queen simultaneously, uh, then after queen f7 and knight f7, black doesn't take the knight, but takes the rook. That's the idea, and again, it is a dead draw, right? So, white has to consider knight to f5 move. It is sensible because uh, white goes away with the knight, which was hanging on h6, um, with the temple, right? Attacking the king and forcing the move. And it's not easy for black to get rid of uh, this uh, uh, annoying pressure. Because if king goes to the f file, uh, then it's possible just to uh, win the queen, right? So uh, knight to d6 will be possible attacking the queen. It will be fatal. So uh, king can't occupy the f file. It's easy to understand. So where should this king go? Uh, definitely king should uh, chase the knight, otherwise white will just grab the knight and in that case white will have two rooks plus minor piece against the queen and should be winning of course because it is a serious material advantage, right? Of course not that easy uh, because uh, queen is uh, the best piece ever <laughs> and uh, black can create some uh, perpetual threats but well uh, it will be still a winning position because, well, white just has a lot of pieces on the board and it is enough. So, knight to f5, king should go to g6. So, as you can see, rook is a bit overloaded, so it wants to take on e1, but at the same time, it is important to protect the knight. So, uh, white has to continue with uh, another check, and it is uh, uh, only one, knight to h4. Uh, e7 square was controlled by the queen. So king goes to h5 now, just getting closer. And now uh, we already uh, can notice that we uh, can exploit the motive of uh, the restricted king. So it comes closer to our camp, so we control a lot of squares here. So we have to check um, different checks, right? It sounds stupid a bit to check checks, but yeah, that's true. Uh, moreover, our knight, uh, can no longer attack the king, right? So we have only possibilities to continue the attack with the help of our rooks. Let's say, uh, if rook goes to f5, it looks interesting because king h4 is very bad. In this case, uh, we just play rook to c4 check. And after king h3, rook goes to h5. Very nice checkmate right? So the king is uh, simply restricted with all our pieces, so every uh, piece uh, takes part in the game. But after rook f5, king is not forced to uh, take on h4, king is not forced to get to g4 square, it is possible just to uh, put the king here on h6. And we can see the problem, right? Uh, because here the knight is no longer hanging. That's the problem for white. Uh, and, uh, well, position is still uh, equal, or at least unclear, right? So, white achieved nothing with the rook f5. 
But since we have this idea, and Sir Alex uh, pointed it correctly, uh, it is um, very important to check rook c5, because rook c5 has the same idea behind. So now if king takes h4, we have the same checkmate. It is rook to f4, and then uh, rook to h5 checkmate. Uh, if king goes to h6 in this case, well, it's possible just to take the knight, right? So rook takes c1. Um, and now let's say if queen goes to b4, attacking everything in white's camp. Uh, white still has a defense. It is just rook c6 check, intermediate check. And after king goes to h5, let's say knight to f3. And white manages to protect everything and white has a winning uh, material advantage. So white should win gradually here. So rook c5 forces only one reply. It is king to g4. After which uh, white has a chance uh, to check one more time. So it is rook to c4 now, protecting the knight on h4. And the next move will be rook takes e1. And many players and many solvers of this study, including some very experienced guys, just break a calculation here because well, they think, okay, it was the main idea, right? To protect our knight, uh, to grab the knight e1. So we achieved this idea. We don't see anything wrong with that. So it's time to break the calculation. And well, it's wrong. Because after king to h3, the best move, and rook takes c1. Yeah, true. White has um, very uh, good material advantage, very good position, very promising one. It doesn't uh, look like white has uh, to lose anything because all the checks, well, they are not that dangerous, actually. But black has a nice counterplay here. It is queen to b6 check. And after king to h1, uh, king goes to, sorry, queen goes to f2. And one of a sudden, white is in trouble. Because rook on a1 is hanging, um, actually, h2 is hanging, and g2 is under pressure. And f3 is controlled, so knight f3 is not possible, knight g2 is not possible, nothing is possible, right? And, um, well, what to do? Uh, by the way, there is a comment from Captain the TT, stalemate queen g2. It's not a stalemate because pawn is still on h7. So never forget about other pieces. So it's uh, actually not even close to the stalemate, right? So the pawn can move, all right? Mm, so, okay, uh, queen to f2, and now what to do, right? e1 rook is hanging, uh, h2, g2, f3, doesn't look like white has a suitable defense. For example, it's possible, of course, to uh, make a draw, I mean, uh, to play rook c3 check, uh, king to h4, and well, position should be drawish, but white wanted to win, right? It was possible to make a draw on the move number one just to play rook to e1. So, after queen f2, white has only one try, only one resource, but it's really nice. And uh, it is possible to find it only uh, when you use this algorithm. So, if you check all the active possibilities, if you consider all possible checks, and if you don't break the calculation too early. So white has a nice rook to e3 check. So look at this. It's just incredible, in my opinion. It looks so nice. So this forces black, of course, to take on e3, and at first glance, it doesn't look like a bad idea. Uh, what's next? The next is knight to g2. Just attacking the queen, right? Uh, protecting e1 square, so no checkmate uh, over back rank, and creating a sort of rook to h4. So, incredibly strong multi purpose idea. Very nice. But it's not over, of course. The first we have to understand uh, what to do with the queen, because queen is handy, and black has no uh, stalemate ideas here because of the pawn h7, right? It is far from h4, so black has to do something. And uh, if queen goes to, let's say, e7, right? Then it's very simple. Knight to f4 check, forcing the king to the uh, fourth rank, and then knight e5 check, 
attacking the king and the queen at the same time. Sir Alex asks, what if black plays queen h6? It is the main line, of course, so have a patience. <laughs> you will uh, learn a lot from that queen h6 line. So if queen goes to f2, let's say, then again, knight to f4, king to g4, and knight to d3. So uh, queen is being trapped almost everywhere, right? Uh, finally, if queen g5 here, then okay, knight to f4, king to h4, knight to e6. Here, at least black has a chance to play queen to g4. Rook takes g4, king takes g4, king g2, but it is not enough to save the game. So this position is won gradually for white. So we have only queen h6. Uh, possibility for black. So here we can see a difference. So here queen controls h4 square and at the same time white has no access to this queen. So if we play uh, knight to f4 then king goes to the first rank and we don't have this discovered attack. I mean this discovered attack is no longer that efficient. We can't um, punish the queen <laughs> somehow, right? But here we can recognize Tsuktuan, right? Because queen is pinned to h6 square. Uh, it's not possible for black to occupy h5 square with the queen. Um, g5, f6, any other square that uh, control, controls, uh, helps black to control h4 loses because of this discovered attack. So actually it is already almost a Tsuktuan, right? So uh, white has to exploit it. But at the moment, of course, um, it's not that easy because king g1 uh, leads to queen b6 check. Uh, it was, by the way, the question of uh, king 95 30. So queen b6 check and uh, black wins because of uh, the next check uh, along the back rank, right? And then grabbing the knight and so on. Yeah, so king g1 doesn't work, definitely. Uh, but if it is almost a... Um, Tsuk Swank, right? Uh, everything that we have to do is just to allow our opponent to play uh, in this position. So we have to make a triangulation again. We can't really um, use our knight. Our knight occupies the greatest position possible. We can't use our king because if again, uh, in case of king g1, queen goes to b6 with check and then gets to b1. Next move. Uh, and wins the knight g2 gradually. So we can only use our rook. And as I said uh, during um, the previous study uh, examining, every piece uh, can perform the triangulation. So we need to perform the triangulation with the rook. We have to control the force rank. At the same time, we have to prevent the activity of uh, black's queen. And well, we need three squares only. So first, rook goes to f4. Because look, if rook goes away somewhere, then queen c1 is possible, right? So rook goes to f4 uh, just to control this uh, c1 square. I mean, to cover diagonal, right? True. So now uh, queen has to go to h5 only. Why? Because, well, f6 is no longer possible. Any other square except for g5 allows rook to h4 checkmate. And finally, if uh, queen goes to g5 here, white has additional rook f3 check, followed by rook g3 idea. So wins the queen and uh, wins the game. So after rook f4, queen h5 is possible, right? Because now f4 square is engaged, right? So knight can't occupy f4. So queen h5 is now possible. So now rook goes to d4 because it was the threat of queen d1. And now white created the threat of knight to f4 in the same situation. So queen has to go back. So queen goes to h6. And now rook goes to c4. So just in time, getting back, finishing the triangulation, right? And now it, it is uh, black's turn to move. And appears it is a tsuktuan. So black can't. Uh, find a good square for a queen. Uh, king is completely limited, so it can't move. So what to do? Queen goes to g5, one of possible lines. After which knight f4, king h4. We already saw this line. So knight e6 takes g4, king g4, king g2, and white gradually wins.